Hello, we're back. Cool episode of Fuel Up, and I'm here with Claudia and Bibi from San Miguel Resource Center. Ladies, thank you very much for being on set with us. Yeah. So happy to be here. Really thank appreciate you. it. Yes. <laughs> nice to see you. Very nice to see you. So um, we're going to start out, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. tell us a little bit about San Miguel Resource Center, because one of the things that strikes me is that a lot of people think in a small cool resort town like Telluride that we don't have the kinds of issues that I think you deal with yeah. and there may be you know there may be some stigma associated with it there may be some yeah. reasons that people not only don't think we have the problems but there may be some reasons why they don't want to deal with it so mm -hmm. if you could just start out and tell me a little bit about the organization its history and its mission yeah well that's a great question um, at the San Miguel Resource Center we really advocate for and support all individuals affected by sexual assault and domestic violence, those are our main focuses, mm -hmm. but we do so much more as well. Um, and that's through you know, crisis intervention and um, helping meet immediate life <laughs> crisis needs. Um, and then like longer term supportive services mm -hmm. uh, for those survivors and their loved ones. Mm -hmm. That includes friends, family, whoever else could be affected because it isn't necessarily just the right. person who has been victimized. There is a much larger impact usually. Um, and then we also um, create social change through prevention education. Uh, so we're in, I think, nine schools in our region. Yeah, they're like paradox. <clears throat> Nuka, Norwood, yep. Telluride High School, Telluride, like... Yeah, Ridgeway. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of any others, but... Uh, yeah, doing programming on what is consent and healthy bodies, healthy communication, healthy sexuality, all mm -hmm. of that important stuff. Um, because it's important not to just intervene after something has already happened and try to control the sure. damage, but to stop um, things from happening in the first place right. and being on the other end and really um and so change. so so tell me just for my own yeah my own benefit yeah and perspective historically when did the san miguel resource center start and have you experienced a lot of growth in the in the services that you're providing and in the need for the services you're providing over the years when did it start i and we just talked about this because we had it I can't remember, but, but it's, been, it's been a while, like, yeah. like 20, 20, 20 years? plus years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Almost 25. And it started, I think, <coughs> with um, community members mm -hmm. and kind of, um, you know, coming together and seeing the need in the mm -hmm. community. Yeah. Um, and I, I've been there for almost four years, so I've seen kind of go up and down. Mm -hmm. I think the more outreach we do, the more we get people to come in. And I think the mm -hmm. most important thing, because we do live in a very small community, um, confidentiality is right. huge and sure. having that trust and yeah. having to talk to those mm -hmm. clients and then having them feeling comfortable coming in mm -hmm. is super important. So there is definitely waves. It right. goes up and down, right. but we definitely stay busy. And yeah. so are people coming in to see, how, how does it work most often? Are people coming in to see you? Are they calling you? Is there a hotline, for example? Are you getting a lot mm -hmm. of feedback from the schools that you mm -hmm. said you were in? How do you, how do you think, is it, is, it, is it about just promoting awareness so that people understand and then they reach out to you? Or how does it work? Yeah, so much. Um, we do operate the only local 24-hour uh, helpline. Um, and we have amazing volunteers who staff that helpline after hours so that we don't have to take our work home with us, which is very important. Um, so we definitely get a lot of callers through that. Um, we rely on our community partners as well, and that might be law enforcement or the medical center or teachers mm -hmm. um, to make referrals to us. And sometimes they'll even bring someone in who they want us to speak with and who's interested in speaking with us. Um, or sometimes they just you know, give them our phone number. It's, how, whatever works for the client because mm -hmm. it's really like everything that we do is client driven so mm -hmm. however works for them right. if they don't want to come to the office and they want to meet us at the library we'll do that like we're open to well it's 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 obviously very serious business yeah and yet for your annual fundraiser the <laughs> chocolate lovers spring yeah. you have fun yeah right yeah. definitely you have fun. Fun. so can you tell us a little bit about that event what it's about when it is where yeah. it is and what you're hoping to achieve through the event this year 
Yeah. yeah, I think the Chocolate Lover Sling is one of our biggest fundraisers, and we've kind of changed it up as years have gone by. This will be my fourth one going mm -hmm. to, or fifth, I can't remember. You know, we started up here in <coughs> Mountain Village, yeah. and now we have it at the Sheridan. And that event is just kind of like to bring in our community partners, mm -hmm. people that come in that want to donate mm -hmm. and um, give back to us. Um, and this year, we are kind of focusing on therapy because we have a therapy assistance fund that we provide to mm -hmm. victims and survivors survivors of you know any crime well mostly domestic violence and sexual assault um to access it so if we have more okay. money we're able to give more therapy cool. sessions yeah. to right. our uh, clients Good. yeah yeah and that's our focus for this year and we have seen our therapy rise dramatically as one of the services that's being accessed um, which is really cool because it means that people are actually reaching out and and trying to access support mm -hmm. and it also speaks to um, how mental health services have been destigmatized. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really great that uh, people are open and actually seeking it out actively and really um, wanting to pursue that. However, we went over budget like 180% this year. <laughs> so and that, that therapy is yeah. being provided by local, local regional therapists. Yes. Yep. Right. Okay. Exactly. So Trained the professional yep. therapists. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Licensed. Okay. Um, and the client would choose who they would want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and we would just uh, financially assist that. Right. Um, and so this year, the fling is this Saturday, yes. <laughs> February 8th. At the um, Sheridan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and the theme this year, we have a theme every year. It's um, Wild West. So we're going to have a live band um, play a lot of covers of you know classic pop and rock songs as well just with a little mm -hmm. bit of a country twist mm -hmm. and um people are going to lead us in some line dancing uh and obviously like every year we're going to have amazing local chefs right. with all their creative creations with their yeah. chocolate creations yes. yep. <laughs> how did that tradition start do you know do you know how the chocolate connection began yeah that's I a great know. question it's actually um my understanding is that it is a domestic violence organiz like um organization theme. Mm -hmm. I, I don't okay. know where it started okay. from, but just, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess just a celebration mm -hmm. of <laughs> good. good, sweet things. Well, it's fun. You go in, yeah. dance, and yeah. get to try some yeah. awesome chocolates. Yeah. No, every year it's a great yeah. event. It's, yeah. one of, it's one of the sort of highlights, I think, because yeah. there's so many nonprofits in this community. Yeah. There's so many of them out there doing fundraisers, mm -hmm. including Tay Ride TV. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to be able to sort of make your mark mm -hmm. on that calendar is yeah. a real achievement. And I think right. uh, yeah. San Miguel Resource Center has done that with the Chocolate Lovers Fling. Yeah. So I wish you guys well. I hope it goes really, really successfully. Thank you. And thank you for all your thank important you. work in the community. It's, it's vital. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah.